good afternoon. When, uh, welcome to Sandbox Live 2016. And if you're, uh, yeah, that's right. So um, if it's your first time uh, and you have any questions during the breaks, please feel free to find me because I need to high for you. And uh, I think I've gotten about half the group, so um, I want to get the other half. But uh, <clears throat> we're grateful to have you guys here and uh, spending a couple of days with us. Um, we purposely put uh, really great content on either end to book in the meeting. Um, when we get to Jay's presentation on digital marketing, I think you guys are going to find that fascinating. And then uh, Tom LaForge on Thursday morning, he was the chief cultural officer for Coca-Cola for years. And he is um, studies um, market and culture trends to help br move brands forward. Phenomenal speaker, and you guys are going to really love it. So if you're already thinking about ditching Wednesday morning, it would be a huge mistake. I just want to tell you that. So <clears throat> Sandbox Live, I want to talk a little bit about Sandbox and what Sandbox is. In uh, 1999, uh, 1998, um, Carl had the brainchild to let's bring customers together, show them a little appreciation, but then at the same time, since uh, he nor I en enjoy a, a boondoggle out of the office because we don't feel like we're trying to get, we're getting anything accomplished, his idea was to create some education for the clients and for you guys, and so that when you come and spend some time, hopefully you'll leave here. Our goal is for you to leave here feeling appreciated, but at the same time, we want you to come and, and take away industry knowledge. So uh, along the way, we, uh, the, the, one of the first meetings we had, um, our, and if you've heard the story before, I apologize, but um, was uh, Robert Fulgham's poem, Everything I Learned, I Learned in Kindergarten. And, I, and on the invitation, I said, let's come play and, in together in the sandbox. So uh, Robert Zeller, Mr. Bob Zeller sitting here, a uh, client of over 35 years, um, Bob is accredited with uh, naming it the Sandbox, and he was the first recipient of the Sandbox Hall of Fame honors about, uh, I guess, five or six years ago. So welcome, Bob. Um, lots going on. We tried to cram a four-day meeting into a day and a half, so um, I apologize if you are experiencing sensory overload, and, uh, <clears throat> but rest assured, everything that we're doing is being taped and, and you can download. Just uh, go to the session on the boards over here. You'll see this little bear paw. Uh, touch it, it'll download the presentations. And then when you get back to the office, you just plug this into your USB port and you can watch them all. A uh, couple other things out in the lobby is a professional profess booth. We call it our confession booth. We'd like you to stop by. We'll be videotaping uh, some questions of what makes you successful. And, uh, you know, so part of this is uh, for us. Uh, we want to use it as, as testimonials, but we, it's also a chance to pay it forward to, you know, give it, pass that down to uh, other people in the industry. Uh, over here at the Sandbox Live Diner, throughout the meeting you'll have plenty of opportunity to get snacks, so make sure and do that. And then uh, hopefully everybody got your t-shirt, you're not required to wear that, but you can wear it tonight if you'd like to over to Stats. Stats is right down the street here, we'll have a great party there tonight, Low Country Boil. So um, there'll be substitutions for those of you that might be allergic to shellfish or don't like shrimp at all. And then I guess the, te the tech showcase. Now what we did is we had a soft start today. So when you came in, it was a round robin format. Um, you know, what, here's what we learned from you. We learned from you that uh, when you do shows, your exhibitors complain to you that nobody comes and sees them. So yeah, I, you know, our support partners back here with, the, with the exhibiting here, we did the round robin format to make sure everybody had time to go around and hear the presentations. After Jay speaks today, you'll have an opportunity to go and uh, back to the tech showcase. 
they, these guys are going to be participating in all the meetings, so don't feel like you've got to get it all done here today. Um, take some time, um, look around, see what works best for you, and then connect with somebody. And you can even high for them. So Sandbox, what is Sandbox? Sandbox is a gathering of kindred spirits seeking imagination and innovation and inspiration, networking with each other, coming up with new ideas, participating in education, and sharing actionable ideas of excellence. Um, participating is a key word here. So, uh, you know, you're going to get as much out of this as you put into it. But one of the key things I want to leave here today with you guys knowing is Sandbox is more than just a live event. Sandbox has seven connectivity points throughout the year because it's a 24-7, 365. We have the Sandbox Exchange, which goes out monthly. We have, <clears throat> um, with all types of what's kind of what's new, what we've hearing about is new, what's going on new. We have the Sandbox social media on the Facebook and, and, and Twitter platform. If you're here at the meeting, I would encourage you to tweet to hashtag Sandbox Live. Thank you. Make sure and put at Shepherd in there as well. Uh, updates on Facebook. What we've seen is we're sharing ideas from one customer on Facebook. Other customers are seeing getting new ideas for their show. We have Sandbox webinar education throughout the year. At uh, the beginning of the year, we did a six-part education on different types of marketing. Uh, it was well attended, and we recorded those. So if you didn't get a chance to uh, participate, then go back, and you can download those and, uh, and, and get the content. We have a Sandbox resource library online. If you come to us and ask us for a best practice document, that we don't have, we'll research it, find it, we'll either write a white paper on it or we will find a white paper on it, we'll send it to you so that you have a how-to and then we will post it on the resource library for the next group that needs one. So it's a, the, the Sandbox library is there for you. <clears throat> we have Sandbox Exhibitor Academy education. We're not teaching exhibitors how to not sit in their booth and sit on their hands. We're not teaching them how to engage. And we're not self-promoting that if they buy a booth from us, they're going to sell more. What Exhibitor Academy Education does is it takes, we help you educate your exhibitors to know that it's up to you to bring audience to the show. It's up to them to sell the audience. So we're helping them learn through statistical data that what's happening in the industry that, and how they can go about working the marketing of a show. So we're now probably doing four to six of these a month now individually for customers. So this isn't just a generic something, it's they're all customized for you. So if you're not doing this now, you should be. So um, reach out to your account executive and or salesperson and they can connect you. And then we do Sandbox TV. Um, Sandbox TV is more about education through videography. Um, so a lot of the content from all the sandboxes have been shot and is there. But now we're doing new product releases. Um, anything that we're putting out there new, instead of giving you static information of it, we're doing it video, putting it in Shepherd TV. A picture paints a thousand words and a video paints a billion words. So uh, we think that it's a better communication tool for us. So that's, we have we started doing this the first of the year and uh, we'll continue to build the library. And then there's the Sandbox Innovation Zone. And I've gotten a tremendous amount of feedback. We started this back in, in uh, February and you can sign up for the Innovation Zone. If, you innovate and we help you innovate and we put it in there and then we do a case write up and then we put it in the innovation zone. Anybody that signed up for the innovation zone receives an email to let you know that it's there. And you can go in and look for interactive products there where you can help sell sponsorship, engagement opportunities, whatever is kind of new and different. That's the number second question that I get in all RFPs. First is what's the new technology? And second is what's new and innovative. So we're trying to capture both of those in the innovation zone. 
And then last and most importantly is Sandbox Live. So yeah, I was thinking about a picture for Sandbox Live, and since I'm up here and controlling the remote, I put my kids up there, because I can. <laughs> I took the, and, and, but there's a method to this photo. Um, we go every summer on a baseball trip, and we go and try to see, we're trying to see every National League, or every Major League Baseball park uh, before I die, so we're, we're about halfway there. And uh, this, we went in spring break to, um, to Camden Yards. And the reason why I brought this up is because you, you can learn so much more here with just meeting people. Vern was talking about these great little poking things. He said, in all my years in the business, this has got to be the single greatest icebreaker I've ever seen. Forget the technology. Even if there was no technology, even if you couldn't download all the stuff, the fact that we're actually going around and talking to people, and I bet most of you have met more people just by the use of the four, the bear paw here than you would normally meet. And if I And he means that in the right way. And in case he doesn't, we, uh, Susan Hall, who is our Vice President of Talent, also known as HR, is here to chaperone. <laughs> so we're, we're in good shape. So it's important to participate, just like you, well, you'll never replace Major League Baseball online, and you'll never, you know, you, you won't, the, the need to convene, the need to get together, the need to read each other's body language, um, you know, my, my, some of my dearest and best friends I've met in this business, and a lot of them are in the room today, and, uh, you know, and there's so much strength in that that you just can't get in reading uh, something online. So it, it's important to participate. So I'm, I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you're participating. Now, I'm going to run through kind of my uh, two-minute version of the state of the industry. Just It's very top flying across the top. So I'm not going to get down into some of the details of it. A, I don't want to bore you to death, and B, I'm not smart enough to understand some of it. So, uh, but what I did want to do is, in a high level, pick out some things that came from the, this year's SEER report. If you're not familiar with SEER, you should go to SEER.org, C-E-I-R. SEER is the Center for Ed, in, Center for the events industry research. And what SEER does is they study our industry to see what's going on and predict what's going to happen. It's uncanny that the, the accuracy of, of, of prediction that they've had. And not only do we support SEER financially, Shepard does, we do it on your behalf, but we also support SEER on our behalf to make sure we know what's going on, what's relevant, and you're gonna see at the end of what I talk about today why we're doing what we're doing at this meeting. So I wanna start out with an overall look at the exhibition industry over since 2001. And these charts look a lot more complicated than they are, but if you look at the, uh, at, at the 2014 to 15, uh, we have the uh, the largest spike there in in revenue uh, over the past, and then everything else has kind of moved at the same pace with uh, exhibition space lagging, and that's important to know because what has happened is we've had the same incline on attendance, uh, we've had the same in, in, incline on net square footage, same incline on revenue but the number of exhibits has dropped off slightly. That means people are taking a little bit bigger space, not much, but the revenue is important because people are spending a lot more money on the meeting without taking a lot more space. And that's important for us to see in the overall index. If you look at the by sector, if you look at the industry average there in the middle of 3.7% change from 2014 to 2015, Everybody positive except the government sector. Uh, the government sector, they don't really expect it to rebound probably within the next eight years. So it's kind of, it's on its own over there. And as you can see, the machinery and, sorry, 
I should have wore glasses, machinery and finished business outputs because of certain trend changes in manufacturing um, and, and they had one of the largest recoveries to make. But um, you can kind of pick your own industry and see where it's going. The good news is that it's all positive in 2015 and we'll see this in projections moving forward. The GDP and understanding what our gross domestic product does for the trade show industry. If you're watching the news and you hear some information about the GDP and, and, you, and you think about how it'll affect our overall industry, look at the trends of the GDP in the last um, five, I guess, eight years and look at the SEER report in the last eight years. While they don't track exactly, it's, you, you definitely see the pattern in there where in the fourth quarter of last year, there was a, a surge in the uh, trade show industry where there was a, a drop in the GDP. You'll see a recovery in the future slides of projections that brings that back more in line. But it's important to keep up with the economy and what's going on with our GDP because that is the health of our industry in general. <clears throat> These are, uh, this is annual real GDP growth and forecast. So you can see in 14 and 15, we were probably somewhere around 2.3% in those two years. SEER projects based on um, the, what they, you know, they don't just go out and magically look at this stuff and, and uh, talk to Jack and the Beans. Uh, there's four or five economists that they bring in to work alongside SEER with the reporting and they're projecting a drop, and it's a slight drop, in the GDP for 2016. But as you see in 17 and 18, we have a much stronger recovery, and we'll have numbers that are greater than we had back in 2006. So it'll be one of the strongest economies that we've had based on what they're able to predict that, then, that the U.S. has had in over 10 years. So that's good for the trade show market because as the GDP rise, so shall the trade show market rise. So in the overall GDP growth, as you can see, where, again, I've talked about the fact that the um, SEER numbers came back in line with the, the gross uh, domestic product in the first quarter and, and then into 16, um, you know, we, we, we saw a really strong fourth quarter in the trade show industry, and then it'll, it, it'll drop back. Now, I will tell you from our own market studies, which is, the four and a half months of producing events. The majority of our customer events are strong. The majority of them are up on attendance and the majority of them are up on exhibit space. Now, I will say that there are some lagging ones that have, uh, there's m many various reasons why. So it's, you know, it's a kind of a sampling of the market, again, matches this. And we have always found the forecast to be very accurate and, and, and following along with it. So they also bench the uh, SEER attendance against non-farm payroll employment. So when you go, so non-farm payroll employment, work, it typically it gets out into the corporate sector and, uh, um, and as does go the, uh, the, the number of people employed, as goes the attendance to trade shows. And you can see how well that has tracked since 2000. And we had a really strong 2014 and 15. And the expectation based on the forecast is that it will rise up to uh, potentially 149 million uh, by 2018. So we've got a, you know, and that is, that is from finishing, you know, just over 142. So like, potentially seven and a half, eight million new jobs in the market over the next three years based on these forecasts. So that's good for us and that's good for our industry. So taking that information, they predicted out the first slide that we had and then they predicted it out the next three years. So what the predictions are is that the number of exhibitors in three years will rise 5.85%. The number of attendees will rise 6.55%. Net square footage will rise 7.77 and revenues 11.76. 
So what we took from the report is that revenues are going to outpace the exhibit space and attendance by 4 to 5 percent, indicating more revenues and funding of non-exhibit related activity. Marketing managers will spend more sponsor dollars outside the exhibit hall. <clears throat> so doing some research on that, the Chief Marketing Officer Council says that global spending on media is forecast to rise at a compound annual rate of 5.1%. Keep in mind, GDP is going up 2.4%, so marketing dollars are going to outpace budgets. Companies are going to put more money into their marketing budget than they ever have, percentage-wise. And it's going to rise to $2.1 trillion in 2019 as opposed to one6 in 14. So that, that money is going uh, it, into general marketing. Now, one of the reasons why we brought in a digital expert, 98% of marketers say online and offline marketing are merging. Digital marketing is now mainstream. Digital commerce is the top priority for marketers. And marketing budgets increased 10%. Now, we talked about regular budgets going up 5.1%, digital going up um, 10%, and 61% of the respondents say they expect those budgets to increase again in 2016. Now, that's a lot of numbers to throw at you. And, and so one of the things that, that I took away from this report and talking to some other marketers about our industry is if it's not only just using digital marketing for your own company, um, and you're going to find out today that digital marketing isn't Google AdWords. So I encourage you to forget everything you might have known about digital marketing because and, and, uh, I thought that I knew something until I talked to Jay, but <clears throat> then I realized I didn't know anything. But it's not only about using digital marketing as far as your organization goes. Trade shows in general need to have a digital marketing strategy that embraces the fact that the, the, your audience, our audience, is, it has a new medium and a new way to spend money. So we're investing in the technology, we're investing in digital marketing, we're investing in the experiential because the face-to-face -face isn't going anywhere. So, you know, from a standpoint of where the industry is, you can take away from here that it's healthy, it's going to continue to grow and, and thrive. Um, you just need to figure out how to, you know, have your uh, niche of what you can take away from it. And then hopefully you'll pull away from this, you know, some nugget about digital marketing. So with that, uh, we invited, as part of our technology summit, uh, we invited Jay Friedman to come and speak. I want to tell you a little bit about Jay. Jay is the COO of a family-owned company. There are three generations, and one of the things that happened after Jay joined the group, we won't say that it was his fault, but uh, in 2010, I think it was, uh, Goodway Group uh, did their last print media. They, were, they, they began in, I think I saw 1929, 1929. And they were a print media company. But in 2010, they went to sole, uh, solely digital media. And one of the, you know, they work with a lot of Fortune 500 companies, uh, I think. And I hope I'm not speaking out of school, but I know like McDonald's is one of your clients, as well as uh, you've got some major automobile manufacturers, and he can tell you a little bit more about that. But, um, only be, I know a little bit of, I know enough about their company to be dangerous, but not enough to tell you what all they do. But uh, I do know the results that I'm that I see in here, and uh, um, from being tied to their business. But uh, Jay is uh, has uh, is been responsible for helping get the, get them into the digital age, and is also really well known within the digital industry. And uh, he's a writer. He's a speaker. He's a, a pretty decent good guy most of the time. But uh, so what he's going to come and talk to you today is about, you know, digital not being part of an afterthought product for you, but how you make digital marketing part of your strategy and how that you can do that to, um, 
uh, help beef up your business. And when he and I first started talking about our industry, I said, everybody in this room has the same core objective, and that's to get audience to their events. And they need help in marketing to make that happen. So he's right on that. And uh, so we're lucky to have him here today. So I will shut up and uh, let him come and speak to you. So thank you, and thank you guys all for being here.